Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two teams will need their quarterbacks to step up and lead their offenses on the gridiron today. It's the Saints going up against the Vikings. So with kickoff straight ahead, we'll check in with our broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, it's one of the new jewels of the NFL, no doubt, as you get a look inside U.S. Bank Stadium here in Minneapolis. Tonight, it's a preseason matchup between the New Orleans Saints and the Minnesota Vikings. Hello, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon and partner, our long national nightmare is over. After six months away, we're back to playing football. And this is way better than Watergate, isn't it? Now we get to have some fun. Watch the veterans. They'll play a little bit. We know that. But the big thing, this new crop of rookies and young guys, they get their chance to take the field and earn their spot. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, the former Louisville Cardinals. Teddy Bridgewater. To me, the best part of Teddy Bridgewater's game is his decision making. Very smart, loves to watch the game, loves to analyze it, and he does it so well, he takes care of the football and keeps his team in good spots. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. The 15 yards there on the catch and run. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. Now, coaches always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. Some runs are blocked so well. You almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed, and that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. Give them 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense. They were just manhandled at the point of attack. Well, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Let's go! On third down, Bridgewater. Man open left side is Brown. And oh, he sheds a tackle. Now he's got some space. Touchdown, Vikings. Corey Brown, 39 yards. And the Vikings have taken a first quarter lead. Well, that's how they envisioned to get the football to start the game and score. And I don't know if that was scripted. Was it an audible? Or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at the three. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. And they will be led out by their signal caller in his second year of the NFL now. On the ground, this is Isaiah Crowell. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Here we go. 
The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Defense has set themselves up nicely. Third and ten now. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And he comes back with one complete. And all the way down to the 24-yard line. A big-time play there for New Orleans. 46 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this. But run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between... This is intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. Now they told us repeatedly earlier in the week in our meetings, we need some plays from our defense here on the road early. They got one. And don't think they were above all week long pointing out to their defense that the other defense is rated higher than them. You going to let that happen, guys? Is that how we're going to play? And they responded to the challenge. They tried to run the counter, just that the defense wasn't fooled. And when they're not fooled, you see the end result. Because what you're doing there, you mentioned the counter. You're using your offensive linemen sometimes to pull or move to influence it. Now he's hit, and Bridgewater loses the football. On plays like this, where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because... This is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets Let's away go. from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. This will be fielded at the 17. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense. Had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what you were doing well before. I thought you were going to say they need to have no memory, but remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. <laughs> so pass interference on the defense. Charles, this is a penalty we see all the time. The offenses know what they're doing. They know how to create great matchups. And defenders, if you're not there in time, they will throw the flag. They go play action here on first down. Looking for the end zone. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. How many times when we see an incomplete pass, we just look at the receiver and say, ah, should have caught that one. That was a drop, and we just put it on the offense. How about a little credit for the defense there? They just forced an incompletion. Yeah, especially after starting in a tough spot defensively, but a good start there on first down. That gave them a little extra confidence there, starting, as you said, in a tough spot and being able to make a play on first down. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Up, on third down, he'll drop to throw. And finding Fedorowicz. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. C.J. Fedorowicz, 28 yards. And the Saints are within an extra point of tying this thing up. It used to be that if you were a big wide receiver and the coaches wanted to make you a tight end, you resisted the move. Now it's almost a glamour position because they have the mismatch advantage. Are you going to cover them with a linebacker? They're probably faster. A defensive back, they're going to be bigger. Tight end is the new big-time position. Oh, the spin. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Second down, Bridgewater. 
He's going to hit his man out of the backfield complete. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage, and that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. So holding by the offense and maybe now got to shift up what you want to do on the playbook. Yeah, definitely. Change what you're doing in the playbook, but boy, the advantage shifts to the guys on defense, doesn't it? to throw. And complete. Right side, the tight end Rudolph. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football, but they face a second and long to start things out. Back to throw again. Over the middle here to Rudolph. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. There are a lot of tough routes to try and cover. When you see a runner come out of the backfield and run this angle route, looks like they're going to the flat, and then they put their foot in the ground and cut back sharply inside, not easily covered, and then when they catch it, good momentum built up by them as well. And able to pick up the first. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Pass the 20, and he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. A big play there out of the running game, 37 yards. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Outside handoff to the right side. If you're a running back, you love getting the ball early, so you have vision to see what's happening in front of you. Right tackle likes that call. Big play for him, but don't forget about the... And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. A great play there. A 10-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings have taken the lead. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how we're going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. This will be taken in at the 1. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Cousins now on second down. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit, and it forced an incompletion. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. Third down here for play clock down to two, and we get a signal and a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. And now a 
first chance for the backup here to throw. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's got it over the middle, Fedorowicz. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Give him 11 on the game there. And that leads to a New Orleans first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. To throw his Cousins. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen, because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. And he's going to take this one down to the 25. Not an ideal spot to be on first. But I love that the play caller did not immediately abandon the running game. I'm sure as a coach, when you throw the flag, you hold your breath, then you get the verification you were right, a sigh of relief. Not only a sigh of relief, a little vindication as well, because every time you pull that red flag and throw it, you could be costing your team a timeout. You gotta give some credit. They're able to hop up in the air and bat that one away, and that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give some type of a pop or a shot. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Third and long for Cousins. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Uh-oh, Kirk Cousins. He's still down on the ground. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. Here comes the Saints punter now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. And out now come the Vikings. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he will fight his way forward to about the 23-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Looking for his tight end Rudolph, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Manti Teo. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. 
Offensively, when you see cover two, the thought has to go through the quarterback's head. Drive the football when making throws. It's not just the deep guys covering. It's the guys underneath you have to be careful of. Drive your throw. Otherwise, you see what... Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The New Orleans defense, we get set to watch them go. They've certainly got something to build off of. They had the interception last time out. And now they have to just make sure they're cognizant of not trying too hard for interceptions. Once you get one, it makes you a little more antsy to try and get another one. Now they got to be careful of double moves, different things like that against them. But they like the momentum that they've begun to build. And we'll see if they can keep that momentum going. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. They'll look to throw now on first down. Quick throw, that's complete on the inside slam. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Offense staying ahead of the chains here, second and three. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. third and short they'll try and pick it up through the air and he's got Kyle Rudolph now hold everything here we're going to get a timeout by the offense it's just their first so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime back to throw now on first down over the middle it's complete and this time he's able to take it down to the 42 now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Back to throw again. Finding time. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Back to throw. And he will find his man on the outside. Touchdown, Vikings! Their dangerous wide receiver as the first half is winding down. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here in the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and carry it into the second half. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. They go back to the air here after the INT, surveying the field. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. I know the initial focus was on how far that pass was downfield, but how about the coverage on the play? Able to stay with him, get his hands where the receiver's hands were going to try and catch the ball, tips it up in the air, and knocks it away. Taylor will throw. He's going to try and go deep again. And that is incomplete. Here we go. Final play of the half. It's
it's Taylor. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with the pressure. Maybe that was for the best. Jeez, don't you at least want your guys to get a drink of water? Probably pretty thirsty. Whatever, your wish, our command. Third quarter now. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But well, this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. They go play action here on first down. The ball comes out, but this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. Now I have to admit, partner, that I've often thought that I don't like this rule. Where the offensive player fumbles the ball, it goes out of bounds, and they get to keep it. <laughs> that's just because you're a defensive guy. That's why you don't like it. Yeah, you're right. It is a slanted view, isn't it? But that's this is where, for the offensive team, the sideline is their friend. Usually it's not their friend. Yeah, exactly right. I actually played for a guy in college. You know what he used to name the sideline? Sammy. Sammy sideline and use him well. That was an excellent job of recognizing the situation. His first read wasn't there. Heck, his second read wasn't there. But he bought himself a little extra time scrambling out of the pocket, got to the sticks, and picked up the first down. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and that'll make it a second down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and ten, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion or even worse, an interception. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. On first down, they'll run it on the draw play. And they've got it in the red zone now, down at about the 19. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Let's go. On the give, this is their fullback. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Now, that's the defense that they were looking for, being able to get extra bodies to the point of attack to deal with the big guy carrying the ball. You really don't want to be in a position where it's a one-on-one -on -one tackle with him. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. A great effort there. A nine-yard touchdown run. And the Saints are back within a score. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. That was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Oh, he shifts past him. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. They'll come out in the pistol. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Because yeah, the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. 
Well, still in search of the first down after that last completion. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge, and that's good enough for a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. Now a play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> He'll look to throw. Over the middle here to Rudolph. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. So now a third and 12 with an extra defender here in the secondary, a nickel look. They'll drop the throw, and Rudolph has it, the tight end. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they've got something going, and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense, or are you just focused on this drive? It, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't score board watch. Everyone does it to some extent. But you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That'll take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. All right, I'm going to show my age here a little bit. We used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety valves. Nowadays, they're a big part of the passing offense. Quit acting like you're so old. You're only six. A fight for the football, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Kyle Fuller. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Back now at beautiful new U.S. Bank Stadium. It's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead. They'll be looking to add to that total as we begin quarter number four. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He's got his man on the crossing route. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. They come up in an offset eye. They'll look to throw here on first down. He's got time. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. And nobody was open downfield there. Looked like a pretty clear throw away. Yeah, definitely was that. I'm wondering why there wasn't intentional grounding. I know they're saying there's a receiver there in the area. Those darn quarterbacks, they get away with everything. <laughs> Spoken like a true defensive back, Mr. Oh, did, Davis. Did, did that come out? It did. Okay. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic, and people wanting to put a little contact on him. Really well done. 
Partner, how many times have you heard it? Pressure creates diamonds, right? <laughs> but it also bursts pipes. And on that one, that's what they got. They got after him, and he was fortunate just to get rid of it. Yeah, he just had to chuck it away. And that is no good. I oh, hit it well from distance, but he couldn't work it back in. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. Let's see how they attack him here. Taylor. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. They'll get four out of that, and it'll bring up a third down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. He got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Looking left side, he's got it complete. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. And they're going to speed things up here. On first down, it's Taylor. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Wide open receiver complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And now they're in the hurry up. Off the play fake, here's Taylor. And this is caught at the eight. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move this. And he takes it across and into the end zone. Touchdown, Saints. A great play there. Ready for the regular season with his second touchdown of the game. And the Saints are within an extra point of tying this thing up. He's having a nice little game. Maybe already has an eye on that third touchdown. And how about what our producer, Christian McLeod, likes to say when they've scored touchdowns like this? He's put a tent up in touchdown city. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Oh, what a move. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. So, Charles, there are the numbers. What's happened here? Defensive adjustments that's caused him to sort of fall off a bit? I think so. That has to happen. You've got to make some changes because in the first half, they were pretty effective. But the second part is sometimes when you're doing really well, you get off your game a little bit. You get off the gas a little. You're like, okay, we've got this thing. And that's not necessarily the case. Maybe right now, someone just needs to tell a joke in the huddle, loosen things up, and get their big guy going again. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. Back-to-back -back stops, make it third and ten. So back-to-back -back plays here where he couldn't get anything on the ground. Now you face a third and ten and assume you're going to try to pass it, right? I would think so because you've tried to run the ball and really it doesn't matter who got the ball in the play because there was no space to go. So then I think you step back, throw the ball to try and pick up the first down. Here's Jacob Shum now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. That's taken on the 25. 
Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here, and they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. Hitting the home stretch here in a great game, a tie game. Let's see if the defense can get the stop they need to get the ball back. They go play action here on first down. Now he's going to let it go deep back over the middle. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. His throw incomplete. And the offense can string something together, but they'll need to do it quickly here to try to get points on the board and win this game. Now Taylor. Throws right side, and that's complete. The 20. Touchdown, New Orleans. Their big-bodied receiver, 65 yards. And the Saints have moved out in front. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And it would appear they're going to get out of here with a come-from-behind victory. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And last year that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee. And that's at the 25. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And on the last go around they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. He'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Green 39. Green 39. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. A great read and it's picked off. And they have the football that will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Boy, what a turnaround. They exited the lockers with a nice lead, and now all of this. What's happened? So when you start to write your novel, you'll start out with, it was a tale of two halves, yeah, won't you? Right, but I'm a bad writer. <laughs> I don't know exactly what happened, because sometimes teams can go in with a lead and get too comfortable, too relaxed, and a couple of things go wrong, and it's hard to get back that good feeling. Ten yards still left on second down. They got pressure there and only rushing three. And there's a defensive coordinator right now who is celebrating not just getting home with three there, but realizing if that's the type of pressure he can get in the entire game. And another timeout called by the Vikings now. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. So third and 15 and an extra defensive back in the game now. Flooding the passing lanes. And that is, I think he caught it. He did, but they'll say out of bounds. It'll be incomplete.
This challenge was initiated by the guys in New York taking a look at the play. Less than two minutes to go. Yeah, I'm sure the coach wanted to challenge it, so he's probably going to send the New York office a holiday card. This is taken at the 18. Good blocking there. Nearly sprung him as it is. It'll go as a 19-yard return. And it'll be Viking football here as they take possession. And now out comes Minnesota. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late-game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute it. Well, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Defense thinking pass. They've got the nickel set out on third and six. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Manti Teo in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. Well, apparently they weren't interested in playing the field position game. They opt to keep their offense out there. A big mistake in hindsight. Yeah, that one backfired in hindsight. It's always 20-20, but let's call it what it was. We would have first guessed that one and said, don't do it here. Bad situation. I think they need to be closer to midfield before I would start to think it was a good idea. Yeah. And once you start taking risks like that, you're going to have to keep taking them throughout the game, especially when they don't work. Yeah, at this stage of the second half, interesting. The Saints in victory formation now as they'll take the knee. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. Down to an ego's Manzel, and that should be your ball game. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then...